button. And that way we will have the session recorded. And for those of you that would like to review it later, or if you simply um, were not able to attend and you're just watching the recording now, um, that is why we want to record it for you. I am going to um, share my video. Uh, so I should be appearing sort of in the, the bottom of your screen because I'm presenting slides at the same time. Um, but at least that gives you a, a look at the real me here. Uh, if I feel like um, it might be using a bandwidth or something like that, I might turn it off, but I think I'm okay with it on for now. Um, again, for those new folks that are just joining us, um, we are using the text chat area to communicate with each other. Um, Jim seems to be having trouble um, hearing us. He's got a very low um, bandwidth right now, so that may be the problem. Um, I'm going to add to the, the text chat area um, because he will be able to see what I'm saying. Okay, good. Um, Jim. Oh, it's working. Great. Okay. Awesome. What I was going to suggest is that you can use a um, Use your phone for the audio if you'd like. If you click on the very top left hand side of the screen, there's a couple lines across the top. If you click on that, you'll see um, use your phone for audio. If you click on that, it'll give you a number to call in. Um, other than that, you might want to try a different browser or, or maybe get a stronger connection. But if things to, seem to be working well for you now, that is great. Um, we have had some um, noise on the listservs here at NIU that uh, internet has been a little bit disruptive today. So um, I guess some of that is expected. It's something to sort of plan for when you do have sessions like this. Um, one of the things that I would just like to put your minds at rest is that um, if you are having trouble accessing the sessions, it's being recorded so that you can watch it later. But I also have uh, previous versions of the same session. So while you're not able to maybe ask your own questions, you can see the session and see sort of um, the questions people asked in the past and, and how the course is organized and, and hopefully um, that'll help you out a little bit. And we can also always have a one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation if you have any more questions. That's perfectly um, perfectly acceptable and um, I'm perfectly willing to do that. Um, but let's sort of officially get things started here. Um, as I see most of you um, are, are in and engaged in the session at this point. Um, so We'll be talking about module one. This is our first um, live online session. We will also have a second one in our fourth week. We'll also be on a Tuesday at noon. Other than that, we'll be communicating very asynchronously. So um, we'll be in a different place and a different time when we're engaged in the um, the academy, um, but I think this is always a helpful time to get together and be able to tell you a little bit more about the academy and to answer any questions that you have. Okay, so um, again, my name is Tracy Miller. I'm the assistant director in the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. Really, the best way to get a hold of me is email, um, and that's because I'm I'm always in meetings and doing sessions like this, and so um, I communicate very well asynchronously. So my email is my best mode of communication. Uh, it's also important to tell students that um, what's the best way to get a hold of you, um, maybe give them your plan for how soon they can expect a response back for, from you. Uh, I work 
in the summer, um, 8 to 4.30, um, but I have a horrible um, personal habit of working over the weekends, and so you usually hear from me um, a little bit slower on the weekends, but usually within 24 hours on the weekend. Uh, so what we're going to cover in today's session is just a basic overview of the course. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about the Applying the Quality Matters rubric workshop that's coming up in July. And then I really want to just kind of open it up and um, allow you to ask questions about the Academy. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we, we did go over this, but from, for the folks that are newer and so was, we're still kind of getting into the session, if you have any questions, use the text chat area. Let's practice it a little bit right now, and let's use the te text chat area to share your name and your department. Um, so again, in the bottom right-hand side of your screen is a purple um, with some arrows area. Click on that, and then use the um, text chat area to give your answer. Okay, so um, I can see Amanda's in faculty development, new member of our team. Welcome, Amanda. Glad to have you here. Um, thank you for chiming in. Heidi is from the College of Law. Um, Melissa is from the School of Nursing. Richard is from the Center of Governmental Studies and Public Administration. Jim's from Marketing. Sarah's from Law. Um, what a great opportunity to really meet some people um, from across campus that don't normally share a common space with each other. In this case, it's a, a virtual space, but um, I think we're going to uh, bring a wealth of um, information and experience, and we're going to learn some really interesting things about each other in our courses. Um, so let's practice um, on the whiteboard a little bit. It's sort of fun. At the um, top left hand of your, of your screen, you can see there's quite a, diff a few different things that you can do. Um, Terrence, I think you were on your phone. You, you might have um, some some limited abilities to use it, but I think um, if you can, go for it. Um, but everyone, try to draw a shape. I see some blue rectangles. Excellent. Oh, we have an oval. Some OK, let's try a different color. If you click on one of those again, you'll see that have the opportunity to change the color. So instead of blue, if you want to change the color, it'll be a blue circle that'll be a little bit left of that kind of eraser icon. We can try changing our color. I was the one that just created the red, red. Oh my gosh, it's getting crazy now. And I can see I'm becoming reduced, so I am going to turn off my video camera. And I can see some new folks joining us. Uh, we are just having a little bit of fun with the whiteboard. Um, we're using the um, whiteboard tools that are on the inside of the screen and And fresh do it because it's clean off it as they do it. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Hi, everyone. I lost you for a second there. Um, if you can hear me okay now, go ahead and give me a hello. 
or uh, raise your hand. Perfect. All right. Uh, yeah, I see in the next room uh, workshop we're, we're having some intermittent um, issues with the internet. So we'll just keep plugging along. Great job using the whiteboard. So um, let's use the whiteboard to answer a poll. So have you um, taught online before? And you can put your, um, you can freehand draw your initials in there. You can make an X um, underneath the yes or no boxes. But go ahead and give it a try. All right, nice job. Great. So uh, most of you have taught online, so we'll we'll be hoping that um, we learn a lot from your experiences. Um, thank you for sharing that. We again, we we still have some people joining us. That's great. And I also have a question. Somebody on the uh, internet, so I'm going to make sure I answer them and try to get them into the session. All right, so let's uh, move on. Have you ever taken an online course? So I noticed in the discussion board that some folks had taken an online course. So let me know if you have already in an online course. All right, so still a little bit of a, a mixture there. Um, a little bit heavier maybe on the no side. So this your chance to experience um, something as an online and it always gives you a really interesting um, perspective. Um, you know, you're kind of putting yourself in your student's shoes, and so it, it can um, definitely help with your online course design. So let's talk a little bit more about the academy itself. Uh, so we have five different academy objectives. Uh, the first one is that we're going to really incorporate a lot of active learning strategies um, that really enhance an online learner. Um, so you're hearing a lot of background. Ryan has his microphone on. He may want to mute that because sometimes what we experience there is an echo. And it looks like he's um, he muted it there. Let me, I'll just mute him myself. And that should reduce the amount of uh, background noise. Okay. It's interesting that I'm being told by an email that there are people in a different session. Mm -hmm. 
did you end up going, um, you joined the link from an earlier email today. Okay, so did anybody use the um, go.nau.edu Tracy Miller slash Tracy Miller office? Okay. Yeah, I suspect that they're in the the uh, the course section, and I actually invited ev to the um, to my virtual office, basically. All right. Um, like some of you, you know, course room in Blackboard, but not to my my normal one. So I just want to help those folks out a little bit. See if I can get everybody into the same spot. One of the things that I did not take my own advice on was having someone do technical support for me um, while I was doing that session. And that's because we also are doing a um, Blackboard Ultra um, workshop at the same time. So most of the team is actually in that. Um, that All right. Thank you so much for your patience. I was just really hoping that I can get um, these folks into the, the session. So that may mean that I'm going to be virtually in two places at once. <laughs> okay. And you're actually going to be able to experience it um, because I will. Yeah, I use the left side bar in the Blackboard course, but it's not the right one. And I now see that nobody is in the, that other section, so they must have <laughs> they must have bounced out. So. Um, I will make sure that they get the recording later. Uh, but I want to continue on with the, the majority of you that are in here now. So our next Academy objective is to work on how to align our objectives, assessments, activities, and content in an online course environment. This alignment piece is probably the, uh, the, the biggest part of this um, course design process. And we're going to do that through um, not only learning with each other, but an academy project. And the academy project will actually start next week. And um, it'll start as we begin to explore learning objectives. And then we'll be folding in our assessments and finally folding in our content and other activities in the course. And so, um, when you're done with the Academy project, what you're going to have is a really good design document uh, that's going to help you be able to design and develop your online course. Um, number three is to select technology appropriate for your course objectives. So you notice we're not starting with technology. We're, we're going to figure out a lot about our course before we begin to talk about the, the technology that we're going to be using. But we're definitely going to to talk about how you make those good choices and the appropriate technology to use in your course. Um, we're also going to identify resources at NIU that support online course design and delivery. Um, and just like we were talking about at the beginning, uh, as kind of an added bonus, we're going to be experiencing online learning from the student perspective. 
um, our goals for you. So these are a little bit outside of our objectives, but um, something we certainly hope takes place uh, during these four weeks together is that we're going to form a community of practice around online learning. Um, and that's um, a lot of what I was talking about with uh, so many disciplines coming together, um, but the one thing we have in common right now is, you know, we're all interested in learning more about online learning and how we can ex enhance our student experience um, in this online space. Um, hopefully you gain some confidence in your ability to design and develop courses. So you'll feel um, more supported, more secure, uh, more prepared. Um, even if you've taught online already, uh, a lot of times I hear from um, faculty and instructors that um, I wish I had this academy when I started teaching online because I would have felt much more confident. And so um, I think in any area that you're kind of working in, um, you know, this will help you gain that confidence. And then finally, that you experience a variety of methods of online delivery. So, for instance, um, a method of online delivery is this synchronous tool that we're using now. And so, um, our experience of this synchronous online delivery method right now has been not optimal. And, um, and so just experiencing it in that way um, can help you understand kind of the pros and cons in how you would want to um, deliver an online course. Um, so I want to hear from you again um, a little bit about what you're most excited about. So are you excited um, about being getting further in your development of your course? Um, are you excited about learning more from each other? Um, really, you can um, use your whiteboard again if you want to use the, the text icon, which is sort of the big T up there. Or you can just add it into the text chat area. It seems like most of you are um, using that just fine. And I can see several people are typing. Learning more about best practices, um, strategies, um, optimal for student learning in an online setting. Um, Jim's most excited about learning new tips and techniques for fine tuning his marketing course. Um, best practices and student engagement. Uh, most excited about learning synchronous capabilities like this. Um, on the screen, alternative teaching strategies used by others in the course. Um, learning about alignment, great. I can see we still have some folks adding things in. But it seems like there's nothing too much outside of what we will be covering here. Um, Terrence is wanting to learn more about online activities. Amanda is typing a bit in, but let's kind of just go over a few of these. Um, definitely new tips and techniques. Um, I will add some tips and techniques anytime um, I think that it might be appropriate. I might mention some things in my weekly announcements. Um, Bob, think about your uh, synchronous capabilities. There are definitely synchronous capabilities um, that we will talk about. Um, you will find that most online students are taking online courses because of the flexibility and um, in time and space. And so sometimes those synchronous opportunities need to be like they are today where they're optional um, so that, you know, if you think about um, working professionals, and I know in, in your discussion board you were talking about how um, you wear many hats, um, it can be very difficult to find it. Uh,
time that works for everybody, um, especially considering, um, you know, that students might be from across the country, across the world. Uh, my next poll was what else do you want to learn, but I think you've kind of um, addressed that a little bit in your initial remarks. Um, so I'll kind of move on to our timeline, but still feel free to um, ask questions, add your comments into the text chat area. That is perfectly okay. Um, next, the timeline. So the, here's how things are going to work. We have four modules over four weeks. Uh, module one is all about the models of online course design. Um, and um, there'll be a bit of best practices in there. Um, but when we're talking specifically about models, it will be, um, you know, that synchronous versus asynchronous. It could be um, a particular type of online course design you use. Maybe it's um, strongly um, case studies. Maybe it's heavily discussion based. You know, there's many different types of models that you can use in your online course design. And really thinking about what that model is up front is really helpful in setting you off in the right direction. Uh, module two, um, we're really going to start to talk about the nuts and bolts of online course design. And that really starts with our learning objectives. So in uh, module two, um, we'll have an introduction to what is a really great learning objective and how it really affects your, your course design. And again, I said in module two, that's where we're going to introduce the course project, which is our design document. And the design document will not be about a fictitious course. It'll be the design document that's relative to your, your course that you're designing and, development and developing. Module three, we're going to be talking about assessing student learning. And um, so we're going to be folding in your assessments that you're going to be able to measure your student's achievement of those learning objectives. Um, and so the assessments can be, um, you know, whatever you really want them to be. This particular course, um, the academy itself, we use uh, a lot of discussion boards as assessments and the uh, the academy project is sort of our, our bulk of our assessment plan for the academy. It may be very different for you. And so it's just learning about the, the options you have and what makes the most sense in your course. And then finally, in module three, we're going to talk about online learning activities and your content. And um, the learning activities um, are a lot of what I I heard about in um, what you wanted to learn more about student engagement. What are the students going to be doing? Um, how are they going to be kind of um, interacting with one another in the course? Um, but also our course content. Um, what are we going to provide for our students um, in the way of content? Um, are we going to be um, doing presentations? Are we going to be sharing? Um, resources with them, you know, all that come play. And again, we're going to pull it all together in a design document and we're going to make sure they all align with each other. Um, so here's the structure of the academy itself. And a consistent schedule is important in an online course. It needs to be um, a bit predictable um, for their students so that they can really get into the content and they're not bogged down into the um, the other things as much. So um, what you're going to see every week is a, um, a welcome video. And I just want to do another quick sound check to make sure that um, we're all moving along together. So if everyone can give me a thumbs up or a OK in the text chat area, great. I saw that the, the text chat area had kind of stalled out, so I wanted to make sure that everyone was still hearing. Perfect. OK. Um, so basically, the modules will open up on Monday morning. I may open them up on Sunday night if I feel like we're ready to go. But don't worry about them until Monday mornings. Um, they'll typically start with a, a welcome video. 
and some information about the module itself, including the module level objectives. So things that I hope you will be able to do by the end of a module. Um, any types of learning activities that we will do. And the learning activity really wraps up everything that you're going to need to do for that week. Um, so uh, Bob, the thumbs up emoticon could be, um, there's a smiley face over on the side. If you click on that smiley face, you'll see that you'll actually have a few different options to choose from, um, including that, that thumbs up. Emoticons are always a little fun. Um, and delivers a message quickly. Um, so getting back to the learning activities, it's really going to spell out everything you need to do. So if you're going to need to watch presentations, if you're going to need to reply to a discussion board, if you're going to need to uh, read readings and resources, it's all sort of there. And, and you could almost look at it as your checklist for the week. Of, of what you need to accomplish. Um, it'll also include your learning activities, um, your due dates, I should say, of the learning activities. So it gives you an idea at the beginning of the week, um, your, due your due dates for that week coming up. If there's a live session, that's where you're going to find it. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, in this case, some folks um, found the quicker route really with a live session um, within the course area. Um, and I will, you know, being new to the course view in Blackboard Ultra, um, that's that's a lesson learned. That's something to realize that um, it, it points you to that collaborate course um, a little quicker than it does if you found it in the module. So um, that that is not a bad thing. That is a that is a lesson learned. Um, the next thing will be a list of your presentations, your readings and resources, both um, optional and requ required resources. Um, any sort of discussion board um, will be within those activities and any other assessments like the Academy project. So really, it will be neatly packaged into that module area. Um, and the newest module will appear on the top. So you'll always know the most current information will be at the top of the page, but anything below, if you need to go back to, will still be available to you as the Academy goes on. Um, so let's talk about assessments a little bit more deeply. Um, I said, you know, the, the majority of assessments will be the discussion boards and the Academy project. What you will look for is that there will be a due date for discussion boards. The initial posts will be due on Thursdays at 11.59 p.m. And the responses to your colleagues will be due on Sundays. The Academy project. Um, in three phases will be due on Sundays. So you should really be starting to think about your discussion board. Um, if you haven't already, start thinking about your discussion board. Um, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, make sure you get those initial discussions in. And then check back in again uh, to respond to your colleagues for that due date on Sunday. Um, and then, you know, make sure you have your Academy project turned in um, Sundays at 11.59 p.m. There'll be one quiz. It'll be in module three. That's the module that we actually talk about assessments. So the quiz is actually more of just a sample of what a quiz could look like for you. Um, so it it's not a high stake assessment. Again, it's just giving you an idea of what a quiz might look like um, in Blackboard, especially in this case in Blackboard uh, Collaborate Ultra, uh, not Collaborate Ultra, Course View Ultra, um, so that you know what it looks like. Finally, the reflection journal. Uh, the reflection journal is doesn't have a rubric associated with it. What I'm looking for is just you to share a little bit about how you're feeling um, this week. And specifically, I'm looking for your initial feelings um, at the end of week one and then your feelings at the end of the academy. And um, just give you a pulse of how you're feeling um, about that. And so 
go ahead and do that in the first week, in the first, fourth week also. Um, but really, if you make any attempt at the reflection journal, um, I'm going to give you the points for it. So we're in our first live session. But just as a reminder, we have another one in um, the fourth week on June 25th. It'll be again Tuesday um, from 12 to 1. I will definitely make sure that I am very clear on um, what session we need to, to get into so what, that we're all able to get in there. Um, Melissa says, I didn't see all these due dates on the calendar at the top of the Blackboard course. Yes, that is because um, I have not made them available yet, so they're not populating in the, the calendar. And that's actually something that we just discovered with the course view. Um, and we're actually kind of calling Blackboard out on it a little bit because um, it would be valuable to see those due dates even if things aren't quite made available yet. Um, if you do want to look at due dates, um, the course schedule will show you all of the due dates, and that's in the, um, the course documents that are in the module zero. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you're saying that because that gives me a little uh, bit of um, information to give Blackboard that, yes, I'm already hearing from, from faculty that this would be something valuable to them. Um, so again, the archives will be available later. So uh, after I stop the recording here, I will just make sure that um, those are published out and shared so that everyone can view the, the archives. Um, what we're looking at right now for the Applying the Quality Matters Rubric Workshop is um, to have it on Wednesday, July 24th. Um, this is an all-day face-to-face workshop. We're going to hold it in the Home Student Center. And I see that several of you have already uh, registered for that workshop. So um, if you haven't taken it already and you can join us on the, the 24th, um, please register there. I've added in a link into the text chat area that you can click on. That'll give you a little bit more information about the workshop and a link to register for it. Um, but really, um, Quality Matters gives us a lot of great tools. Um, oh, sorry, did I say June? It, it is on the it's on July 24th, for sure. I may have said June because I was thinking back to um, when our live sessions are. But yes, definitely June <laughs> or July. July. I'm getting my own self mixed up. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about um, the Quality Matters um, rubric workshop. Um, it really goes step by step um, through all of the different um, review standards, um, really you can call them review standards, but really what they are, are there, it's those best practices that many of you were asking about. Um, and it gives you a way to kind of um, self-assess your own courses and, and see if they're meeting those, um, those best practices. Um, so I highly recommend it, but you'll definitely learn more about quality matters because really the course has been um, the Academy has been designed to meet the Quality matter standards. But I'm interested. I want to make sure everybody's still awake, and I think you are because um, you're making sure I stay on task. Um, have, has anyone already attended the Applying the Quality Matters Rubric Workshop, which we affectionately call APPQMR? And you can use your whiteboard again, or you can just put yes or no into the, the text chat. OK, so again, we have a little bit of a mixture, but that's OK. Um, so if that date works for you, um, feel free to register now. If it does not, that's fine. We actually um, do this workshop five times a year twice in the fall, twice in the spring, and once in the summer. So we'll just catch you next time. That's fine. Bob, I'm glad you're eager to attend. 
Okay, now I'm just going to open it up to questions. Um, and I may be able to application share um, into the academy um, if the internet is cooperative with me. Um, so if there's something that I can point you to, I will do so. I can see Melissa's typing. All right, I see those questions coming in. Okay, um, not sure my app is fully functioning. Is there a button for turning on the whiteboard? Um, if if you're using the app, you may not have the, the ability to use the whiteboard. And that's, again, something to consider when you're thinking about a synchronous session. The, um, you know, being in a browser and using it on the computer is usually more fully functional than, um, than using it on a mobile device. So that may be why you're not seeing it. Um, Melissa says, will we be working on our own courses in this class, such as developing module learning objectives? I love that question. And yes, um, you will be working on your own courses. So that means that you will be working on developing your own module learning objectives. So you may um, have the ability to work on your own course level objectives. Um, Sometimes that's not um, always possible. A curricular committee came up with your course level objectives, um, but there's usually a little bit more freedom to work on your module of learning objectives, which is why this is so valuable when you're moving forward you, with your own course development because that work's done already. Um, Bob, also is there a ch um, also a chat? Can't find smiley face anywhere. Um, can't click your registration link you um, sent. Sorry about that, that mobile um, inability right there, Bob. So I will definitely send that information out um, within the course so that you have it. Um, I'll also probably, you know, follow up with a message to everyone. Um, just apologizing for the issues and making sure that um, we're all on the, the same page at this point. Um, any other questions about the Design Academy or the work ahead? Uh, so Bob has a Surface Pro, um, which is a hybrid laptop tablet. So suspect app defaulted to mobile mode. Yes, that, that makes a lot of sense. And again, it's really good example of um, what can come up. Okay, so Heidi says, for Thursday's discussion requirement, do we do um, just the introductory chat or is there another um, discussion board assignment? So let's actually take a look. Let's see if I can do an application chair because I can, I can answer that question, but I want to make sure that, again, the course design is doing what it needs to do. So is everybody getting this screen kind of intermittently popping up on them now? Yes. Okay. So I'm not totally happy with that doing that. So I'm going to use a different type of application share. I'm going to share the, the screen that I'm on. And I'm going to go into um, our course. And here's the Online Course Design Academy. If you watch my navigation tour, um, you might have seen my um, 
my suggestion of starring it so it goes up to the top. The other thing you'll notice is that this new announcement um, pops up, which I kind of like. As soon as you get in there, you see the latest announcement. Um, so this is my announcement this morning um, showing where to go for the live session. But I'm going to click off of that. And I'm going to go into that module number one. I'm in instructor mode, so I'm seeing more than you would see. Um, just because I'm um, in that instructor mode. But I'm going to go ahead and click on that module, which you can see is visible to students. And that's, this is that course structure I was talking about with the introduction, your presentations, your readings and resources, and then those activities that we have during the, the week. And so one is the, the live session. Uh, which I will check out, but making sure it goes here. But you can see in module one, it's not just the getting started, um, getting to know you introduction that was actually in module zero. There's also this uh, two different discussions. One is the models of online course design, and one is the online support uh, discussion. So there's actually two discussions that will be graded this time. And so uh, there's more than just the getting to know you, which was your original question. Um, so that hopefully answers your question there. OK. And um, the other thing we talked about was um, knowing what your activities were for the week. So if I go back up to, um, I can collapse this, kind of clean that up a little bit. I can go up to the introduction. And this is where I said you'll find your checklist of things you need to do this week. So you see the welcome video from me. You can see the module one activities and objectives and then the learning activities. So this, again, is your checklist. So the, to kind of complete everything you need to do in Module 1, you're going to participate in the online meeting. You're going to watch the introduction online course design. You're going to watch the module, the models of online course design. You're going to watch the online support presentation. You're going to review the required readings. Maybe you're going to even review the optional readings. But you're also going to respond to two discussion forums. And they're both, the initial post is due on Thursday with the two responses by Sunday. And finally, you're going to complete your first reflection journal. So I absolutely do not mind if you ask questions now or um, in the discussion board area. Um, but feel free to ask them. Um, I'm getting out of that module, and now I'm going up to the top of the main page again. And here's another way to get to the discussions. This, um, this little discussion, I, and you're going to see there's the getting to know you discussion. Also visible to students right now is that Q&A discussion. That's the one that you can ask, maybe it's more often topic technical questions, and then you can see there's that module one, module one, two discussions there. So that's kind of walking you through that. Um, let me know if, if that's not clear or if anyone has any other questions. If you're typing questions in, that's great. I'll kind of wait. But I will tell you, there'll, there's one exception um, to these due dates. And it really falls in line with the last uh, in Module 4. And that's because uh, we're ending on a Friday. We're ending early. We're not going to stretch this, um, this Course Design Academy out throughout the weekends. And so we kind of tightened up the uh, the schedule that final week. So 
Um, you can find that information in your course documents. That's where I said you can download um, our course schedule. So that's kind of how you can find that. Um, but you can also, um, you know, when we get to that point, you'll see in, um, in Module 4 that the, the due dates have, have changed a little bit for you. Giving you a little bit of a, a sneak peek of what's ahead there. Do we have any other questions popping up? We have about, well, we have eight minutes left together. And I, and I don't mind finishing up early, but I also want to make sure that you have the opportunity if, if you'd like to ask some questions. Thanks, Jim. If you do have questions that you think the whole class will benefit from, um, add them to that Q&A discussion. If it's something more uh, personal in nature, you have questions about a particular assignment, um, you know, think of it if your students wanted to know about their grades, then go ahead and use the email and just um, email me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, I guess the final thing that I just wanted to say is that um, I have graders helping me in this design academy. Um, in many cases, if you are um, working with an instructional designer uh, as part of our instructional design team, your instructional designer will be the one that is providing you feedback and, and grading your design document. And that's really because those are the folks that you're going to be working with. And so they might as well um, jump in there right away and be able to, to see the work that you're um, producing. Um, and other than that, you'll you'll see a lot of information and grading from me and um, Amanda, who is also there. She uh, is on our uh, faculty development team. She will be grading some of your work. Um, so you have lots and lots of support um, behind you here. So let's have a great four weeks. Um, and I hope to see you all online soon. I'm going to stop this screen sharing. Great. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully this internet cooperates with us today.